Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we're gonna take a closer look at the Super Wing Series 148 scale F4J Phantom 2 from Zuke Mura. This is a new tooling freshly released at the end of 2016 from the Japanese manufacturer. The kit comes in a big sturdy box with the American flag on the sides plus several pictures of the built F4J. All the description beneath the pictures is in Japanese and at first glance the box resembles Revell concept for making their boxes. However, this build here is professional one and highly superior compared to the German company. In addition to that we have a description which you are supposed to read before purchasing the kit. Strangely, it is stated that the kit is made in China and we all know that Zuke Mura is Japanese company but probably that is due to the lower prices of labor in China. We have wonderful box art and a stamp from Boeing which state that the kit is produced under license from Boeing Management Company and that the F4J Phantom 2 is a trademark owned by Boeing. Compared to the Academy kit that we recently unboxed here, this box is quite superior. It is thicker and nicer material, more sturdy and resembles Mank models boxes, which are by far the best on the market. Inside of the box we have everything packed separately, the instructions, then sprues with the engine, transparent parts and so on. Everything nicely arranged and not loose like we saw in the Edward box. The bottom of the box is very thick and sturdy which is quite nice and far far superior than the rockin' Rhino flimsy box that you probably saw in my unboxing. First let's take a look at the envelope holding the instructions which are black and white. Besides the instruction sheet inside we can find the decals and the painting and decaling guide which is a larger sheet folded into two. The instruction sheet is simple however easy to understand with a very nice description plus auxiliary symbols which are better than the competitive companies especially the paints which resembles Vallejo's paint bottles and are quite easy to understand everything as usual with the aircraft starts with the seats which are very nice as you will see in a minute we have several warning signs here and there Plus, extremely nice detail in the cockpit, straight out of the box. Several steps through finishing the cockpit top, six to be more precise. And very little space for super detailing. Then we have two halves of the body which on the upper side are covered with the plate to hide the seam line and then we have the nose. Then are the engines which are a very high point at this kit. We have an exhibition stand opting us to present the engine outside of the kit showing all its beauty. You'll see in a bit what I mean by that. The other option that we have is to put the engines inside of course and there are a lot of description and information provided showing how to follow everything in order to make it perfect with important alignments and steps in which you got to follow in order to complete the build properly. There are a couple of pages related only to the engine build and here again we don't have too much space for super detailing although we have some. Then our additional parts, intakes which are a very high point in this kit. 
the nozzles, which alignment is described very properly and it is important, something that every other company seems to have missed so far. Zuki fixed that mistake and provide us with an exact description and proper alignment of the exhaust nozzles, which as you might guess are supposed to be centered in a specific way, not just glued back there. After that we have the flaps and the wings plus the exact angle that we need to follow in order to keep the specific phantom look when seen from the front. Even though the plastic is bent and prepared for that, Zuki Mura added additional information in case you want to be perfect in your assembly. On the very next page we have the same thing with the stabilizers which are to be bent downwards in 23 degrees angle again prepared from the plastic material that goes inside however for absolute precision we have the exact measurements then we have the landing gear place where some detailing must be added eventually if you're a fan everything looks pretty clear and crisp as it is from the box. Then we have additional parts around the landing gear, the belly, auxiliary intakes and the canopy which can be made in two different options. As you will see in little we have two separate pieces and then we have another one single clear piece for the closed canopy eventually if you want to show your aircraft in flight. Very thorough description of how everything must be done. A whole page dedicated just for that. Then are the weapons, which are not so many, with additional information how you should arrange them in order to follow the exact realism of the aircraft. At the last page we have the sprues with their names plus information and this is very interesting which one cost how much. This is for use in Japan only unfortunately. Eventually if you wanna buy additional let's say you wanna display engines on the site probably you'll be able to buy just that sprue and do it that way. Next, starting with the sprues, first we have the engines, the nozzles, the wheels and the gear struts. The engine parts are superb with clear and crisp detailing molded nearly perfect and attached to the sprues in a way that you can remove them without damaging the surface in any way. The nozzles are a bit thick, which is a letdown of this kit, however, nothing is perfect, neither this product of Zuke Mura. However, if you take a look inside, you will see that the engines and the air ducts are almost flawless, so eventually you'll have to thin the nozzles or buy aftermarket ones. Then we have the struts, which as you can see are wonderful, however Zuke already put out an aftermarket set for those made from metal. As for the wheels themselves, as an option for weighted ones. On the next sprue we have the pylons, the back plate which covered the seams of the two halves of the body parts of the cockpit and some additional stuff. As you can see the riveting is perfect, the detail is great especially on the pylons where everything is deep enough with clear lines and rivets without any bends. The small parts are crisp and delicate, very thin 
and nicely arranged. Almost no flash and as a very high point I must add the cockpit details. The side panels, the gauges, everything visible and close enough to the resin just to make it good and useful out of the box without the need to buy aftermarket stuff. Then we have the nose, the slats, intakes, air brakes and others. Here special attention must be drawn to the nose, the slats which are attached in a specific way in order to keep them safe and with an option to detach them from the sprue without any damage. I checked the slats, they are very flexible even though they might look thick. All the parts have special engravings. Rivets are here. Some ejector pin marks here and there, but nothing that cannot be fixed. From the inside, the rivets are small, delicate, but visible. The best thing of the sprue, according to my opinion, are the intake plates. They have wonderful riveting and very tiny, small, delicate holes all over the front part, which if you manage to keep visible after priming and painting, you'll have a stunning appearance of the intake parts. On the next sprue we have two halves of the body, the covers of the intakes and another letdown that I must add here, the rear part behind the nozzles, the plate is made from two halves as you can see here compared with the academy kit where we have single plate and if you paint with metalizers you have less headaches compared to that one where sanding and filling will be necessary and metalizers are very tricky when it comes to that. Otherwise everything on the sprue is again perfect with several kinds of lines and rivets, different one from another with a stunning look and I must add better than Academy which is by far the best kit of the Phantom. It's not that big of a difference, however, small detailing here and there present us with a superb model from Zuke Mura. We have the tips of the tail and the half rings behind the nozzles which are also nicely detailed and precisely depicted. Next we have two sprues with the ordnance, a couple of rockets which are made in a delicate way, however I am pretty sure that all the aftermarket companies already planned to issue a better ones made from resin with more delicate and thin parts. I cannot say nothing bad about those. However, as I said, this is a market which is very competitive and probably somebody already have plans about those. The next brew that we have are the horizontal stabilizers, the cockpit decks, rims and here we have another huge achievement from Zuke. The stabilizers are very thin, extremely nicely engraved with everything plus very thin and delicate slats which are by far the best one I've seen on any Phantom in any scale. The rivets and the lines are deep on every detail here. As the engraving of the rims, not to mention the details in the cockpit decks. Those are comparable with resin and in my opinion they are perfect out of the box with no need to substitute whatsoever. 
all the cockpit detail is superb and with few wires that you might want to add here and there you will achieve wonderful results Everything again clean, crisp and without flash. On the next sprue we have more cockpit parts, seats which are again superb, comparable with the resin parts, even better than some with all the rivets, the details engraved. Thin and delicate ejection handles. Nice detail on the seats, texture, resembling the real deal, nicely engraved pedals, all the cockpit decks properly described, depicted with precision, no flash, no unnecessary ejection pin marks, all the rivets there. All in all, perfect Japanese precision. On the frame of the canopy there are cables, which eventually you can spice up with few more, but as it is, enough to show it out of the box with perfect representation of the real thing. Next pool are the wings, the bottom part which is quite similar to the one we have in Academy. However, everything here is executed with a little more finesse. Riveting here again, deep enough, with nice deep panel lines. All the detailing on the belly is quite visible. Again, comparable with Academy, but an idea better than it, especially on the brakes on the insides of the rockets and all the small detailing regarding the engraving of the Phantom. On the upper part the bulges of the wings are slightly shallower compared to the Academy kit again, although pretty much the same. Probably you won't note the difference once the kit is built, however one must know that execution of everything here is superior. The last brew that we have is the clear canopy and I detach the front panel just to make the masks for the Phantom which I hope will be first available on the market regarding Zuke Mura's F4. As you can see the canopy is not the clearest one, however the visibility through it is perfect. I don't know how they made that very 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 clean parts usually looks unrealistic. Here we have a slight milkish appearance, but perfect transparency. Again all the rivets, all the lines available. Plus, everything is thinner compared to the competition. Unfortunately, we have only one marking option, which is presented on A3 sheet, colorful of course. We have a US Navy Phantom from USS Constellation 1972. Pretty dull for the era, gray, white and black with very few additional markings made from the pilots or the crew, but with tens of technical stencils, which are a nightmare when it comes down to the F4 Phantom. Everything is properly depicted and it's not likely that you will make any mistake decaling that beast. All the information is clearly provided and all you need to have here is patience, couple of days and decaling solution.
as you can see they are spread all over the bird especially on the belly and I am guessing that most of the molars will miss a few however everything is there and in order to be proper you'll have to take your time decaling that phantom The decals themselves are made by Cartograph, which are the best in the world of course, and is a big sheet, half of it technical markings, the other half are navy signs, numbers, markings and US stars. There are two B's and two patches from, for both sides, plus for those who don't like to risk with their skills on the cockpit deck, decals for the cockpit, which I personally will avoid due to the perfect detail presented in plastic. The colors are a bit dull, which is typical for the era. However, everything looks perfect and if you follow the decal application properly, you will have a wonderful looking aircraft in the end. Everything is thin, glossy and with the help of decaling solution you will have no troubles decaling that Phantom. Again unfortunately only one option and already an aftermarket Zukimura set with another Phantom decals if you decide to choose something else. That wraps it up with Zukimura's F4J Phantom. This is the newest tooling on the market and it's comparable with Academy, especially with the reboxes from Edward. The latest one, exactly the same, Rockin' Rhino. Again, F4J. However, here we have a better box, a better tooling. Unfortunately, one decaling option compared to five or six with the Edward set, but superior plastic, superior engineering and comparable price. In my personal opinion, this is the best 48 scale kit ever, better than the Tamiya F16, probably better than their new F14 and the best F4 in any scale, beating Tamiya's 32nd scale by far and beating the Academy latest tooling too. Zukimura definitely raised the bar a lot. I hope that you liked the unboxing, subscribe if you did, comment down below, I would love to discuss the Phantom with you and see you in the next one.